Hi guys, so I've wanted to do this video for a while now. I just, I really feel like even if it helps one person, then it's totally worth sort of sharing my experience. Um, a little bit of background, I was diagnosed with endometriosis in about 2012-ish, 2013. Um, I had an operation for it um, in the summer of 2013 and they cut out loads of cysts and then they, you know, monitored me after a while and then a couple of years later they told me that I had a cyst growing on the muscle of my womb which meant that it was in a place that they couldn't operate so basically they were like your only chance now um, of sort of it not getting worse and trying to stop it is to stop your cycle um, so I went on the pill continuously um, then for some reason they put me on the coil and long story short I asked them to put me on the copper coil because I know that my body reacts really badly to hormones and the only thing I've ever been able to take is the mini pill um, Fast forward like nine months later and they tell me that actually they put in the hormonal coil without my knowledge and the only reason I found this out was because I was having such bad side effects. Um, so I had it taken out and then went back on the pill. Um, so that's kind of what I was doing to help help it not spread if you will. Um, but they, you know, endometriosis is meant to be a disease that you can't cure, you can't get rid of. You basically have it for life and even when they cut it out it grows back so I sort of accepted that I was going to be dealing with this for a long time and I didn't really set out to try and sort of cure it like all of the things I'm going to tell you that I, I think helped are just things that I've changed in my life since then so I don't think any of them in particular helped so I don't think it'll be like one thing in particular um, that sort of made it go away I think a combination of all of these things or you know it might be three out of five things um, that have helped and the other two didn't but because I didn't set out on the journey to with the intention of doing this I can't really tell you that one specific thing helped so essentially I went for a checkup and um, well I asked them to give me a checkup I was like been a few years I kind of want to see what's going on has it got worse you know all that kind of stuff and I went and they said it's not there anymore like that it's gone and I can come off the pill and all that and I was like what um, so I'm just so happy right now um, obviously endometriosis like impacts on your cycles your moods um, but also just your well-being and your ability to have babies so for them to tell me that it's gone was just absolutely amazing um so yeah let me sort of get into the stuff that i've been doing and these are the only things that i've changed in my life since that scan when they told me that it was growing on my womb muscle so the first thing i did was i completely cut out meat um that includes fish so i basically decided to go vegetarian and that was more for ethical reasons than anything else but since I did I did loads of research about it and I I think part of it makes sense that I think it would help with a condition of, such as endometriosis is um, especially with beef but I know sort of all animals will have similar issues but I know beef does most um, you know animals have hormones and a lot of animals are pumped full of hormones especially cows and when they sort of go and go to the slaughterhouse, they get scared. They get fear and stress and that releases stress hormones. And those hormones don't disappear from their body when they die. Like they're still there in their sort of flesh. And when you cook the flesh, it doesn't disappear. So you're eating loads of hormones that then affect your own hormones. Um, so I think that that played a big factor. Um, continuing on from that, the second thing I did was I cut out dairy massively. So before I sort of decided that I was going to go plant-based, 
I drastically reduced my dairy intake. So I never had dairy in coffee or anything like that. Um, again, it was mostly for ethical reasons, but loads of health issues um, sort of stem from dairy as well. Main one, sort of linking back to the meat thing, there is so much, like, uh, so many hormones in milk. Like, milk is designed to make a little calf into a massive cow. Like, so many hormones. So when you've got something that is a hormonal disease, like, maybe I shouldn't call it a disease, a hormonal illness, <laughs> putting more horm hormones into your body that aren't meant to be there is not going to be helping. So um, I was still eating like eggs and stuff, um, but just drastically reduced my dairy intake. Like I would never have it in anything. The only stuff that I would have is like a chocolate or, or something like that once in a while um, back then. So I do think that that played a massive part in it. The third thing that I started doing, um, I think if you look back on my um, how I fixed my immune system video, I think a lot of that played a massive part. So things like taking probiotics every day um, and vitamin D and stuff like that. So I'll link the video um, either like somewhere up here or, or down below um, or just go on my channel. But um, I do think that fixing my immune system and boosting it up really helped because it meant my body can start healing itself. Um, and I do, I genuinely think that that had a massive impact. So the fourth thing I did was I did loads of intermittent fasting. So I think um, there's a lot of evidence basically out there that shows your body heals itself when it's in a fasted state, um, just because it's not using the energy for digestion and stuff like that. And I don't know, loads of other reasons. So I've been doing loads of fasting and I do think that's helped again, my immune system sort of boost itself. <laughs> I think I'm on number five now. Um, I also started exercising um, regularly. So although I've had sort of ups and downs and you know if you've been following me for a while you'll know that after I went to Thailand I couldn't work out for three months because I came back with such a bad chest infection I was literally off work for like six weeks and I just couldn't go to the gym. So you know I've had little blips like that but just consistently over the years, I have tried to be active and work out and, and stuff like that. And again, you know, people do say, I say people, everyone says that working out for you, that working out is good for you. I can't talk today. It's been a long day. Um, basically working out is good for you. So I think that again, it contributed to the overall picture. I do think, um, Honestly, in summary, I do think that the diet aspect was the biggest contributing factor. Um, I genuinely think that there is so much evidence out there and, you know, whether you read studies or read books or look at videos of people like the one I'm making now, like there are so many people who've had so many health benefits when they've given up meat and dairy. like. I'm not gonna sit here and say, you know, go vegan or whatever. I, I don't, I'm not that person. I'm not gonna be that person. But there's genuine scientific evidence that, a lot, or not even scientific evidence, like actual just people evidence of people saying when they've given up meat and dairy that they've, you know, healed themselves. So I genuinely think those are my main two things that I would suggest. But obviously all the other stuff are, also other things that have changed in my life between those two appointments and I do think a mixture of them all probably helped. So that's it for this video. If you've got any questions, please let me know. I'm so happy to answer them and I really, really hope that, you know, it at least helps one person cure their endometriosis and I'll be really happy. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram as well. Bye.